Hey guys, it's Ken from Miniature War Gaming Warriors, and it's finally here the Fulcrum Jaegers, uh, German paratroopers from the Second World War. We're going to aim for around about the 1944 period, so Normandy, and uh, we're going to go from there. I'm going to give it a go at doing a camo coat and um, see how it turns out. So let's give it a crack. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously going to get the boots painted in Black Templar. There we go. I'm trying a different camera angle today as well. So I think a little bit closer, a bit more. Gives you guys a bit more detail. Thing is, I've been looking into this this camo for a while now, and there is a few things to save a bit of time. So, like these boots and that, you could paint that bit of the back technically in the like the Luftwaffe sort of blue, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to go straight in with black Templar over the whole boot just to save a bit of time. But again, your mileage may vary, so you may want to do that. All right, that Templar. Pretty sure there's nowhere else on the model that is going to actually need the black. I say that now, and probably in about 15 minutes' time, I'll realise actually, yeah, that needs black. But that's the black Templar. As always, give my brush a little rinse. And next thing we're going to do is the trousers. These are going to need two coats because I don't think it's going to be dark enough. Uh, Space Wolf's grey. So what we'll do is we'll paint both. We'll paint the trousers for the minute, and you need to be careful with this model because the jacket actually comes down to. You see the line there where I've just painted. That's actually the jacket. So like his cover all smock. So I'm just going to paint very carefully along that line. Making sure to uh, get everywhere I need to. That's the other good thing about contrast. It flows straight into the recess. It's really nice. You can also just in there, just nice and delicately, just there, because that's the blue of his shirt underneath. So that's that. Make sure to get around that. Don't worry if you mess it up because you can just go over with the main colour, which I use Eshen Grey for this. So the primer is Ashton Gray from Grains Workshop and uh, go back and do any mistakes. So I'll let that dry and then I'll put a second coat on and after I've done the second coat, we'll um, we'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. Right, in typical Ken style, I've changed my mind straight off the bat. Um, instead of waiting for that to dry, we might as well stick another color on. So um, I'm gonna go with Gargant fur because you've got some wood. Um, just here on the entrenching tool. So I'm gonna to paint that. I'm gonna try and get these other little bits done and out of the way so we can just concentrate on the jacket in a minute. Um, do that first. So that's Gargant fur. So it's quite a nice brown to be fair. OK, 
cool. And also, just on the actual water bottle itself, I'm going to paint that in like a gargant in the gargant fur as well. And again, because I'm using contrast, I'm not bothering to pick out these little tiny details, which you normally would. I'm just trying to get this ready to go straight on the table. And there you go. What did I say about the Black Templar? I knew I missed a bit. <laughs> So just on the top of the water bottle there, Black Templar. Just here. Black Templar there. Now you got a choice, you could go Black Templar just here, but I'm going to go with uh, Basilica Grey, it's one of my favourite greys, it's like the metal effect for the weapon as well, so I do, I do like, I do like this grey, so trenching tool. There. I'm pretty sure this is the gas mask holder, isn't it? So just making sure to get there just underneath. And there's that. So there's that. And for the bread bag and the other bit of webbing just here, I'm going to go with um, Skeleton Horde. Again, it's probably not the most accurate of colours, but I think it looks quite good. Do a lot of my troops with Skeleton Horde. You know, you could probably make a better colour for the bread bag. But we use contrast. Well, I use contrast paints because I just want it done quick. So that's that. Cool. All right. So. Well, that's been doing that. That. Space Wars Grey is drying quite a bit, so I'm going to whack another coat of it straight over the top. Of what I put on already. So this is a typical example, so I've put too much on the brush. Even though you're meant to have one thick coat. much nicer yeah it's much better when it's darker much much better yep that is much better Okay, so that's the second coat of that on. So that's about as far as I'm going to go with the with the Space Wolves. So that's the that's the grey done 
I'm not going to bother putting an, another bit at the top there because you can tell it's a different colour, so it's a blue. Um, so next, you got the belt round here. I'm not even going to bother doing that yet because black's going to cover that. After I've done all the jacket, then I'll do the details on the belt. But I just want to concentrate on this jacket. Um, this is the bit that will take the longest. So when you're doing batch painting, this is what you want to do. So you want to put the whole coat on first. While that's driving, move on to the next one. Do the same, do the same, do the same. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Once uh, you get around to your very end, normally the first one's dry. And then you do your second colour, go through. Then you do your third colour, go through. So first thing I'm going to do my base color so most of my things that I've been seeing you've got like a under under sort of tone so I've got a choice again I can either use skeleton horde or I can use agros dunes which if I want a lighter finish of the jacket will be skeleton horde or a little or a darker um, will be the Agros Dune, so it all depends on preference. And from the stuff I've been seeing um, with other people, like uniforms and stuff, I'm probably gonna go with the lighter color for this one. Um, if I change my mind, I can always just go over it again once it's dry um, with the Agros Dunes, but I'm gonna go skeleton horde first so the whole jacket and with this model the helmet cover as well so he's got his helmet cover there so the whole jacket area is going to have this color and this is our base layer to work from and i've selected the lighter color out of the three so i could have gone in with a green or i could have gone in with you know the brown but well the dark brown but I've gone in with this one because the other colors will sit on top of this quite nicely whereas if you put like a dark color you can't really go over it very well lightly so Like I say, I'm expecting to do some neatening up all over this model. want to make sure I get this jacket covered properly so that you can see just by different angles there quite a bit under there that's not done quite a bit under there so yeah the phone decided to cut on me again <laughs> but yeah as I was saying painting on camera is not as easy as um, it looks it, it can be a nightmare but I made sure to do the helmet um, in this colour as well but I'm going to let this dry now because this needs to be nice and dry before I uh, start painting over it um, once it's dry we'll do the jacket and then once we've done the jacket we'll do the flesh and then once we've done the flesh we'll do the weapon and it's done so yeah okay next one is the jacket so I'll see you in a sec right I'm back and it's dry so I'll switch to a much smaller tip brush now we're going to try and do the jacket okay I'm going to start with the back this is going to be quite hard because I'm, I'm going to try not to do round edges, but we'll see how it goes. We shall see. I'm going to use Minister and Green for this part. I just want to create, I don't want to take up massive amounts, I just want to create. A sharp sort of green. Like that.
Right. Like I said, I don't want to use huge amounts of paint. What I have seen people do in the past is use like a sponge sort of technique. So like that bit there, I don't want it to be a round edge. Try and square it off. And obviously after I've done the green, I'll do the brown. making sure and now I'm just trying to do like L shapes I'm being careful because I don't want to overdo it so I'll put a little bit just under there under the trousers and obviously we've got the helmet here It can be quite difficult. As long as you're careful, you should be okay. I'm just taking my time. Right, and have I got a bit of green everywhere? Yeah, I would say I have. Like a little rounded edge there, I don't want that. I want it to be more square. So I've got a bit of green everywhere. Okay. So that's the green. Now the big choice is with the colour of brown, what I go with. Um, there's a lot of dark browns in the range to choose from. So you've got like the cryo brown, the wildwood. Um, and you've got like the lighter browns like uh, the gargant fur. And I'm probably going to go with leather, uh, snake bite leather. So I'm going to try this because I know this is quick, this could be quite dark. But not as dark as some of them. So hopefully this will be a happy medium. I think it's going to look pretty good. Alright. Okay, I 
I've got my tip and my brush. And again, the green and the brown seem to overlap with this. So I'm just working around the model. But at the same time, I'm just making sure I'm leaving room for the other colours. I'm just trying these these colours. Just something a bit different in it. You know, make sure to get the front of the uniform. But I think that's the problem you're going to have with these contrasts. You're not going to be able to form as nice a lines as you're going to want to. Where it flows off in the recesses, it's much better at a smoother paint job than it is a sharp paint job. Got to get under the arms as well. Be fair, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. You just don't want big layers of 
one color. So I'll probably go back and put a bit of green in there. That's not too bad at all. Right, okay, so while that's drying, what we'll do is we'll paint the flesh in and we'll do the weapons, um, and then we'll go back and just give the final touches on the coat itself, um, which will be like little green uh, lines with a really fine detail brush. Um, to be fair, you might not even notice it with the contrast, it depends. So I'll do the weapons and everything in the flesh, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna do the flesh. Get them in flesh for this one. Reason for getting them in flesh is the color I do all my Western Europe soldiers in. Cool. Majority of the flesh is done. Cool. Okay, so now with the weapon. And we'll go snake bite leather, the wood parts, and then basilica grey for all the metal parts. So on the FG42, we've got wood on the back bit, on the stock here, that's wood. There's also wood around here. It's right by the handle. Not the handle, sorry, the um, front grip. Make sure top bits nice and covered yep yeah. just want to get under that there we go okay and now we want the 
Pharmaceutica, great. Just making sure to get rid of that. Mistake there, let's see. Alright. You can see I've made a mistake there. She's in some water to water down that part of the contrast paint to basically pick it up and just push it out of the way like that. Right, so basilica grey with the rest of that, and then we're back on the jacket. So that's the weapon finished. So that's the FG42 done. Right, okay, right. Okay, so I've been toying with trying to get um, the little bits of green that are in the camouflage actually on the um, uniform. I tried paint brushes and I can't think of, I can't get it to work. So I've got a pin here and I've literally just put a bit of green paint on it. And I'm literally just touching the edge of the, the model and following the lines. Just making little green, green bits. You can also, which I find the works even better, I've got the British Parrot guy, his bayonet, so any models with like a bayonet, so if you've got a bit of plastic with a bayonet on it, just literally dip it in, I'll show you on the back here, look, there's the back, and all we're doing is we're just touching it, dipping it. Putting little random green lines in to the camo. You just want them to be darker than the green that you've used. Yeah, we're getting there. I'm finding it's actually working really well. Just the end of the bayonet. I'm finding that's working better than a pin, really. You got round here, around the side here. On. You don't need to have lots, just enough. But it, it really does make a difference when you're visually looking at it. You're looking at more of a finished model and you're just following the uniform. If I go on the helmet here. Yeah. I 
obviously don't do this with a painted model. Like, like I've got this British guy, but he's getting stripped, so it doesn't matter. Keep a model you don't mind. Or something like a little bit of plastic. That you don't mind getting a bit messed up. I've practiced as well first. I'm just hoping a base primed miniature. But um but yeah. I'll um I'll get this done and then you'll see the end result anyway. So yeah, I'll see you in a sec. Right, that's the model all done. I've done the um speckling bit for the camouflage. I think it brings the uh, all the paint together, you can see it on the arms there. Um, but it brings all the camouflage together and it makes it does look, make it a little bit different than uh, just just on its own so yeah well thanks for watching and see you again soon